What is up guys? Welcome back to another Vern Supercoach video. This time we're going to go over our NBL team reveal. That's right, the preseason has ended, the Blitz games have ended, we've seen a lot, and look, I'm still not even 100% set, but there is a few positions I'm definitely locked into, and then a few contemplations I have to take into account when choosing my final team. Uh, now look, just a few quick things I'm going to go before we jump into it. First of all, I appreciate all of you for tuning into these videos, for liking and subscribing for your consistent injections of Supercoach content directly into your YouTube feed, and for just also, honestly, being here. Like, it's just, it's awesome to have you guys here watching along, asking questions, and, you know, I try and answer them best I can, and uh, if you do want to find me more frequently, you can find me on my Twitter. I'll put a link down below, but that's just at Verns underscore SuperCoachHub. Obviously, I did a video recently with uh, Dave, the winner of NBL last year, and our boy SuperCoach Boz, uh, who finished seventh overall. So honestly, pretty stacked lineup there. I was like, damn, we're talking to some big dogs here. So that was really nice to sit down for the SuperCoach Hub, talk about that. And it's always a good mental refresher. Um, I think just because me personally, we all know I'm always a bit scattered. I jump on here, I start talking, and then I just lose control, and it's nice to have people to ground you and be like, oh yeah, well, there is also these facts, and you're like, yes, I did know those, but I'm going 100 miles per an hour, and I can't hit a break. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I should probably check that this mic's even recording, which it looks like it is, so let's, let's just hope it is, okay? Um, <laughs> oh man, that's going to be embarrassing if it's not, but oh well. <laughs> um... Jumping into it, another thing I wanted to go over, huge shout out to our boy Supercoach uh, with DR. Um, honestly, Lions got up yesterday in a massive comeback win, which is awesome. I love the little video he sent to our group chat, a very funny video to say the least. Uh, and obviously he did shout me out in his last team uh, review as well that he did um, to come watch uh, NBL content. Because let's be honest, the, suit, the AFL content was, it was, uh, it was lackluster at the least last second. We... We didn't do well last season, um, but we're going to step that up with NBL this year. And just um, just a shout out to DR and a challenge to him to go and put a team reveal out there, my man, for NBL. Like, I know he does this. I, I understand. You've got kids. You've got work. You've got commitments. If you can't, we all understand, bro. But I want to see you get out there and get a team reveal done because, honestly, you're a huge part of the su like, super coach community in a whole. So you put out an NBL video, and I think single-handedly, get like an extra thousand people sign up to play because like, oh, DR's doing it, why not? Like, I'd love to see you get a video out, my man. Uh, and then we can, you know, I can see what you're looking at and we can always have a bit of a chat, what we can do. Um, also get onto those other boys in the chat that haven't joined our league. <laughs> um, but yeah, moving on from that, I've also opened up an open league. Look, I already have an open league with the Supergirl Hub. We have an open league with the Podmasters that you can come and head and join. Probably should have jotted those down. We'll go to that after the team reveal maybe, but I did make my own open league just because a few people were asking in, you know, the YouTube comments and I was like, oh yeah, I guess if you did miss out on the head, the heads and you still want to play me come join um but you can also yeah join the super coach hub or Podmasters. um so look this this league might have nobody in it but let's put it out there uh the code for that will be six nine four one one two so come ahead join that have a bit of fun bit of a head to head against me see if you can top me this year um i'm feeling pretty confident with as i said a large chunk of this team and then uh i'm maybe getting a little bit spicy with the other chunk <laughs> um in regards to head-to-head -to -head league, though, I will have one more. It'll pop up somewhere in the video. Uh, I I don't actually know where yet. I'll just I'll just randomly pick a time and drop it then. So you're gonna have to watch along to find that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will jump into the team here. Uh, with the preseason games, I I basically watched all the pre-preseason games. I watched most of the Blitz games, basically all of them. It was honestly one of those things where I've come to a bit of a time crunch where I'm like, man, I still got like four games sort of left to watch. Um. And the season's starting in four days. Like, I've, I've got to hurry up. And I was like, look, let's just have a quick look at these games. And to a degree, see if they're worth it. And I, I looked at, like, the Sydney Breakers game. I even turned it on and watched the first quarter. And I, like, realized very early on. That this is what made me make this decision. But I watched this earlier and I went, oh, Adams isn't playing. Oh, Quall isn't playing. Liafa isn't playing. Cooks isn't playing. PJC isn't playing. Okay, like, is there a point of watching this game when like, legitimate starters for both teams, like, five of them are out. Like, maybe if Lee, even if Liatva is a bench player, he's getting close to 20 minutes a game. It's relevant that he's missing because somebody's getting his minutes. So I st sort of turned around and went, okay, let's have a look at these games and see who actually played. And I saw who played these games. I saw the Brisbane versus Cairns game, and basically 
None of the starters got over 10 minutes of court time. They've played their entire bench the entire time. I mean, fair enough. You're four games away from the season. You don't want to risk an injury. They've already had a bit of a preseason run. Just cruise it. So because of that, I do think the last few games did die off a bit in the sense that starters were getting heavily rested. The Sem game, they rested uh, Sobi and they rested... um. Walton Jr. as well, so it's just one of those things where, yeah, the last few games I actually think ended up being less relevant than the early games, which is good because I watched a lot of the early games, so like, awesome. I watched, I think, the more relevant games. So we'll jump into the team to start, and from my take, I did actually watch the Tasmanian game versus, uh, I don't know what the name, Quilo or whatever it is, I don't know, it starts with Q, um, some Argentinian team, I think, I think it was, <laughs> um, and then they also had a game against the G League, but I, I haven't seen that game. Uh, but the first game, I, I mean, it was good. Magne actually really dominated that game, which was good to see because we didn't see it in the first few Blitz games from him. Um, so yeah, I did, I did watch a fair bit of content here. I'll be honest, we're starting off in the forwards here, and when we look at the top priced forwards, none of these guys interest me at all. Um, also, if you're on Drell Martin, 6% owned, get off him ASAP. Straight up ASAP. Like, it just, it's, he's not playing, bros. He's out for six to eight weeks. They've brought in an import injury import to cover for him so yeah get him out of your team obviously these are probably guys that automate their team or they're already tuned out and totally forgot about nbl um but yeah if you aren't and you are on him get off him now <laughs> um yeah none of these guys up in this price tag really interest me above the 277 mark then we get to the 277 mark and it's like okay which of these guys can perform at this 350k price tag but have a bit of a discount on them and i think there's a few guys that actually meet that like a few guys that really really interest me um the problem is you can't have too many of them and i, I do think there is a bit of merit to this but you can be very spicy um I, I i'm gonna go through a few team iterations to a degree i'm gonna go over what i think is almost essential but i'm gonna talk about my other options I am contemplating. Um, but with the forwards, I think it's straightforward. Like, you're picking Cam Oliver. Like, this should almost be 100%. You're picking him. He is going to be one of the best forwards in this league. He's going to be over 350k at minimum. And you're getting him for a discount. Pick him up. Put him in your team. He's got the best, the, the second best super coach run to start the season. As I said, I've done a breakdown in my last video. But it's literally like Melbourne number one. Sydney number two. And then it's a little bit hard to say like Cairns and Adelaide number three. I mean, technically they have the most games there. But because they don't, they have singles in game one and two. You'll have other teams that are already having price rises by round two. Even if their fixture's not as good. So you got to take that into account. So I think it actually gets a bit murry between this like team seven to three mark and who's really got the next sort of best schedule there for a starting team um but i do think it's as simple as melbourne and sydney full stop both these teams have round two doubles so they're gonna have the early price rise and then melbourne has the most doubles over like the first stretch of the games and sydney have the second most doubles the same amount of doubles as cans but cans don't have their first double to round three so you could technically start someone else let's just say a darius days or something like that and then get a price rise out of him then move him to a tanner groves and then you get three out of the next four games worth of doubles because that's what cans run is so yeah it gets a bit murray after that um but i do think cam oliver just 100 percent lock him in like lock him in if you're not locking him in you're not taking this seriously it was 32 percent of super coaches that are taking this game seriously and honestly, this isn't one of those things that you pod for the sake of podding. Like, this guy, at minimum, is playing to his price tag. At absolute minimum. And he's still technically, you know, there's only four other guys more expensive than him. So, just pay the money. Get guaranteed bang for your buck. And, and just have a good start to your season. Don't dick around with it. It's that simple. Um, I think Darius Days is a really interesting one. He was very, very good in the games I saw, and I was very impressed from him. Someone that I kind of want, but it's impossible to make this work if I'm running Cam Oliver in the forward position. Because you've got to have Jack White. He's the next no-brainer. 43% of people have him. Okay, I think... Cam Oliver, Jack White there, your forwards. Like, you need Cam Oliver in your team. You need Jack White in your team. It's that simple. Full stop. Leave it at that. Like, lock them in. Throw away the key. If you don't have these guys, you're not taking this game seriously. Um, then we will get to the bench. The bench is a little bit interesting here. Because there's nobody that really screams to me. Like, when I get to this, like, 200k mark, you could look at an Alex Tui. You could. He was quite good in his games, 
but he was quite good in his games when I don't think Noy even played this last game. Uh, as I mentioned, Cook didn't play. Um, Quoll, Adams, uh, Liafa. Like, I know that those guys aren't direct replacements for Tui, but sometimes they go small ball and play Tui at the three, which I think Quoll directly correlates to. But also, these are minutes they have to give somewhere. So, they, they come out of the total team minutes, I think. Um... So, to, I mean, Tui's been in good form. If you went for him, I wouldn't feel too bad about it, but it's a lot of money to pay up for a guy. You're going to be sitting on your bench at the end of the day. So, that that's kind of, that's a lot of money. And it's 15.5 is averaging. How much does he need to average over that to be worth it? Because let's be honest, let's go down to... Praith has also been very good in this offseason. In my opinion, these bench guys, the schedule doesn't matter as much. You really just need to pick guys that are going to make money. These are our money makers. We need to pick the guys that are going to make money. And I do think we have to pick Lockie Olbridge, which is really annoying because of last season. He basically did the same thing in the preseason. He was unbelievable. We all started him and then disappeared. And this year, I do think he's going to probably be in the same boat to a degree. Like, I don't think he's going to disappear. I'm hoping he can transition, like translate what he did in the preseason into actual season, but it's not going to be like the preseason. You're not going to have him dropping 30 points a game. If he can get towards like this 15 mark, I mean, he's at 10. That's beautiful. 15 puts him up to around about this 180, 82k mark, we'd say. So beautiful. That's putting extra 60k on his price tag. Like I'd be very happy with that. that. That's good money making. That's fine. So for him to get to that 15, it's an increase of five points. Do you think Tui's pushing towards 21 points per game in the minutes he's going to play? I mean, it's not unrealistic. I just don't personally see it. And I think that's what we're going to compare. What are these guys actually going to add? And that like score, and then you gotta basically add that on top of anyone that you're paying up for. Do we think Rob Lowe could be pushing 22 points a game, sort of thing? I wouldn't be surprised if he did as well. I mean, this is a very interesting one. Do you, do you think that's worth it? Prather, 11 points per game. This is a very interesting one because Sam McDaniel's been out, Josh Bannon has been out, but Prather has been very good, and he is so damn cheap. He doesn't have to do much. Like, if he can get towards 20 points a game, even if it's not 20 points a game, here we go, 17.5 points a game, he's making 80k. That's so much money. That's so, so much money, and, and completely reasonable for what Prather can do. He's looking way better right now. Um, so he's an interesting one that I'm definitely considering as well. Uh, Gak hasn't been too bad either. There's been a lot of players, I think, really playing above their price tags. It's just, it's hard to pick out which ones are going to be the keepers. And I think the other two that I think I'm very interested in, in just the forward only slot, Tony Sm smith Milner, actually 7.3's price stat. He's kind of playing big minutes, but we're missing Bannon. Once Bannon comes in, that probably cuts into him. But he was pretty decent. I don't think he was really that bad. Um, Bairstow off the bench, but once, as I mentioned, these other guys are back. If he's playing five minutes a game, it's not worth it. Uh, and here we go, Le Pepe. Um, honestly, he's starting for the team, and I feel like when the season starts, I wouldn't be surprised if they keep running the rotation the way they are. Cook starts with Le Pepe, so they have two big bodies there, and then when the rotations happen, then we have uh, Oliver come on, and he comes in against the bench team and just dominates. Like, I think Le Pepe seems like a genuine 69k player. Once again, he doesn't have to do much. Can he get to, let's say, 10 points a game, which would elevate his price to 121k? So, not like just over 50k on his price tag. It's definitely a possibility. Um, and I think at that kind of price tag and what we've seen, we probably just say, yes, it's worth the risk. He's got a good schedule. Let's take the risk on him. So I think Oliver and White, you just lock him in. It's almost impossible to look past the Old Bridge situation. And something I've got to take into account with Old Bridge and Henshaw. These are both players that burned us last year and have been very good in the preseason. It's like, if I was looking at this holistically, if I... Don't take into account, like, you know, your never again list. Like, oh man, these guys burnt us last season, so I'm not picking them purely because of that fact. It's like, okay, let, let's remove that from the game. Looking at this holistically, if I saw players of this price tag performing like they were in the Blitz, would I be picking them again? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. 
and that's the thing I've got to take into account with Allbridge, and I, I really just don't see anyone else around his price tag. That gets me excited. I mean, Nick Marshall is doing well, and we did have Lat Mayen doing well, but they've obviously got the import, the, the injury import they've brought in to cover, so that means I think it's just not relevant going for them anymore. Yeah, and I think Le Pepe at his, at his price is, is pretty important. Yeah, just got, just got to hope that Oldbridge steps it up. I mean, you'd hate for 44% of the competition to be on Oldbridge, and he actually does it this year. He actually gets it together, and he ends up to over 200k, and it's like, great, I wasn't on that. Awesome. Behind the eight ball. So I think Oldbridge, you just you look at it holistically, and you take the risk. Uh, we'll jump to the uh, centers now. Now, centers... I've already sort of talked about my favorite guy, who was Marcus Lee, but then if you did watch the Supercoach Hub, you would have seen that I talked about Rob Lowe, because we know on the bench we're going to be picking Zikowski. It's it's just facts. Like, he's at a 7.8 pri like, like price tag. Can he get to 15 points per game? I think he probably can, which gets him almost 100k. Like, you just, I think you just got to pick him up. I think you just got to make money. You just got to accept it. Um, so because he's getting picked up, that does make a bit of a problem with Lee because if we do start Lee, who also wasn't very good in the Blitz, you do get put in this position where when he's on his single games, what, do I just trade him? I guess I just have to at that point. Um, or just play Lee on a single, which doesn't sound very good. Low, at least you can flip him upwards. I can always move him... With Oldbridge, maybe I can trade Oldbridge out of the time. I can move him with Oliver, but then I don't really have the bench coverage, so then I'd have to probably trade him anyway, so I guess that doesn't really matter in hindsight, unless I'm trading someone on the bench. So, doesn't look great for me, though, these guys. Low was better of the two in the Blitz, but... Yeah, I wasn't very impressed with either of them. I think that I wouldn't be surprised if they get like 20 points a game, which is an increase on their price tag. It means they will make money. Um, so 40 points on double game weeks. And I just stopped and thought, and I thought, is there anyone who can get 40 points a game in single weeks? There is. There is, and he's a pod. And it might seem crazy, but I am so tempted to start Tyrell Harrison. He has been incredible in this blitz. He looks like someone who I. This is a guarantee. I'm not even saying he might do this. He I guarantee this. He will be over 400k by the end of the year. And let's take something into account. We're looking at these rookies going, hey, these guys could make 50k, maybe 100k, or yeah, maybe 100k. I just told you that Harrison's going to make a hundred and. 63k at some point in this season. Is that not better than any of the cash cows we have seen? Hell yeah it is. So if we have a man that's guaranteed to get over 400k, like I am locking that in. You guys can come and flame me later if he doesn't, but I am so confident that he will get to 400k at some point in this season. And you're just putting it in your pocket. Now, what I think the problem here is, obviously, um, I... Oh, man, I was meant to have the schedule up. Where did that schedule go? I was meant to have it because I wanted to look at some points here. But as much as we talk about, hey, he doesn't have a double until round nine. Okay. So that's eight rounds without a double. So it's eight rounds. You're giving up. Like, you're naturally putting yourself at a disadvantage. But not quite. Technically, round one, everyone has a single. Okay, so that's seven rounds you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah, but we also have the game round four, where it's like cans, sixes, kings. You only have three teams on the double. It's not that bad, a big of a deal. There'll be there's a good chance that players may you may have to field players that are only on one one game that week. Okay, so that's not really too much of a disadvantage, I think. Round five, even more important than that. That's only two games, JJ's and New Zealand. Yes, we'll be trading in a bunch of New Zealand players then, but you're still probably going to have Kings players. You're still probably going to have uh, United players. So rather than having Lee on a single in round four, Low on a single in round five, you know, that's what we'd have. We have Harrison, so we're not really giving up a disadvantage there. 
we're kind of matching it for three of those rounds at least before we hit the round nine double. Uh, yes, the, the rest of the rounds, there's a lot of teams on double, so you're definitely giving up points there, but three of those rounds to eight rounds, we're only down five rounds to a degree. And as I said, Harrison can probably match these guys on single weeks because he's that good. On top of that, he's going to make so much money. In my opinion, he's making more money than Rocco. So if you could somehow fork out the extra 140k, run Harris on your bench, you're going to make more money than you would if you had Rocco in your bench, in my opinion. But there's a lot of rounds that you can just put him on the field and take him as a single. Uh, not a lot, but as I mentioned, like three rounds that you can probably just take his single score, and it's going to be better than most. I also think round one, if this ends up busting, obviously you can just jump off him. You can jump off him by round two. You can jump off him by round three before other teams have price rises if it ends up busting. I really just don't think it is, though. What I wouldn't be surprised is they have New Zealand in round one. I wouldn't check out their Blitz games. Even the games I watched, their inside game looks weak. Humphrey dropped 40 super coach on them, getting like 17 rebounds. That, that's an over-exaggeration. He didn't get 17, but you get what I mean. They're a weak inside team, and who has them round one? That's right, Bullets. Bullets have them round one. So Harrison's going into what looks like the weakest big man team in the competition. And he looks like the best big man in the competition. I I know I've already guaranteed you over 400k. I'm going to give you one more guarantee. Round one, he's scoring over 40 super coach points. Lock it in. I, I'm just saying. And if he goes over 40 co super coach points, he's probably going to be close to the highest score of the first week. Meaning you just put the captaincy on him. So we're going to get a huge round one advantage. We're going to make a ton of cash off him. And he can probably match some of these 200k players on single weeks. I mean, even if you end up losing out, let's just say 100, 200 points, that, 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 does, that does hurt. That's quite a lot of points, especially over eight weeks. That's actually way too many. Let's just say 100. Um... I mean, as I said, three of those weeks, Com comparatively, it's not even that we're looking at every single week, but I guess United between round one to round nine only have three single games. Okay, so let's, that's three single games we take out. That means there's five extra games played by United. So since they've played five extra games, if they got an extra 20 points per those five games, they end up making e extra 100 points. The difference is Harrison's going to make you an extra 100k so i just think I'm, I'm just so tempted to go on harrison like this is obviously me not only trying to convince myself doubling down on this it's obviously trying to convince you guys listen to what i say with a grain of salt because look i'm, I'm trying to convince myself here i mean statistically speaking there's teams with better runs that have good centers that you could probably get more points off but i just think bang for your buck this is your guy this is him um, and the, the crazy thing is, like, round 9, they end up with a double. Round 10, they have a single. But then round 11, all the way to 18, they have doubles. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we get to round 9 and everyone's like, we have to get Harrison in because Brisbane have a crazy good run from here. And he's at 5, 400k at that point. If you've got to pay up however much money to get him. Like, I just think if we start him, we could end up in a situation where you like he's the only player in super coach i see that you could potentially end up holding all season and it's not because you sit there and you're like he's just good enough to hold all season it's just like well no he's cheap enough that by the time we hit round nine there's a chance he could have made close to like totaling 400k plus earned you a ton of points and then he's got a good fixture so we're not going to get rid of him just because he got to his peak in cash if anything we're going to hold on to him for the rest of the season basically so yeah, I think um, Harrison is someone I am so interested in, and I am locking on in at this point. Um, now he's one of the iterations I talk about when I talk about moving this team around, but yeah, I'm a big advocate for Harrison. And as I said, you can call me crazy for that, that's fine, but he is elite. Uh, and the other crazy thing for Harrison, this is a, you know, this is towards you yourself, mate. You're in a team with Zakowski. Rated to go top 10 in the NBA draft. The scouts are there. Everyone's eyes are on these Brisbane games because they want to see Zukowski. Bro, just turn it up yourself. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if you go ballistic this season. And unfortunately for Brisbane, they not only lose Zukowski, 
they lose you next season and then they've got no bigs <laughs> because you're that good and eyes are going to be on you. So make a splash. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, let's jump down to the guards and this becomes interesting with guards. This becomes very, very interesting. Um, it, uh, this is, I'm honestly, this is where I'm struggling the most. I'm struggling the most with these guards. I think I've convinced myself that I will be starting Shay Illy at his price tag. I do think we're probably at minimum getting what we're paying for. And if we're going to get a guy that ends up scoring 40 a week because he has so many double games, he has more than anyone else... Like, I'm, I'm alright with that. Um, if he could make some money, great. But then after he's good run, we just trade him on out and we don't worry about him anymore. So, I think I'm happy to start Illy because of the good fixture. Um, but that leaves a lot of money. We had a lot of money sitting here and it's like, oh god, okay, what am I going to do with that? What I think I'm also interested in is starting Bryce. And that might, it might sound weird to people. And I know that we talked about it in the Supercoach Hub and we're kind of against it, but... The way I'm looking at this is, if you don't use a trade after round one, you're just wasting trades. It's unlimited trade format, guys. We can trade as much as we like. So, saving a trade is just giving you a disadvantage to a degree. I'm not saying you have to trade every week because your team might be perfect and you don't have to trade on that week. But, I mean, there's two ways you can look at this. You can start the season with a round one team that's perfect that you think you're going into round two and you don't need to make a single trade. And both those trades are sitting there as emergency trades only. Okay, that's definitely a possibility. And then if your team is perfect, then you don't use either of those trades. Okay, I guess that's good. That means your team's perfect, which is awesome. But what if I was to start Bryce? And I have the full intent of trading Bryce after round one. Okay, so... If I end up in a situation where my team's perfect, then I at least use one of my trades to get on whoever I want. He's the most expensive player in the game, meaning I can get any guard. Any. We haven't seen Adams yet. We haven't even seen him play. What happens if Adams comes out round one and he's just gelling with this uh, Sydney Kings team? He's given away a ton of assists and he walks up and easily drops 35 points. You're like, damn... Adams has a single in round two, and he looks he looks the goods. Okay, well, we just go Bryce to Adams. Cool. Locked him on in. We get a double in round two. Perfect. I'm happy with that. Walter Jr. comes in massive as well. Okay, well, we can just go Bryce to Walter Jr. We can go Bryce to anyone. So Bryce is kind of a safety net that no matter what happens round one, we can just go Bryce to whoever, and, and it's locked in. Now, that's assuming I don't need to make any other trades. We still have one safety trade. So in a worst case scenario where Oliver goes down round one and everyone has to trade him and you're like, oh no. Well, we still have a safety trade. We can move on Bryce. We can move on Oliver. Even if I hold him for round two, it's not the end of the world because round three, he does have a double game. So it's not the end of the world. I think having him for round one... He's, I, I think he'll be good. And he's not going to have a price decrease. We talked about this in the Supercoach Hub. Where it's like, oh, Mitch Creek lost so much money, like 60k in like a couple of weeks. I don't plan on holding Bryce for his price drop. If I get forced into getting holding him for his price change, then it is what it is. But I don't plan on it. I think we just put Bryce there, hope for a really big round one punch coming out of Bryce and Harrison. Um... And then we've got the backup of Oliver White Illy. Like, this just looks like a good starting team, in my opinion. The only thing here is I think Harrison's almost a guaranteed captain option, in my opinion. And if you're picking up Bryce for this much money, you kind of want to put the C on him. I'd, I'd feel bad paying this much for Bryce and then not putting the C on him. But I, I think I'll go against it. Uh, I mean, debatably, you could do the same thing as PJC, as long as you plan on moving him on. The only difference here is, as I said, worst case scenario with Bryce, I can't hold him for round three because he's got a double. PJC obviously has two buys round three and four, so then you have to move him. You have to. Full stop, you have to move him. And if you don't move him, then you're just screwed. So um, I think Bryce is just a safer option than PJC when it comes to this. If you can, So I'd, I'd just do that. But 
yeah, what this leaves is still a ton of money for us to be able to play with. And we can look for a lot of players, whoever we really want. Um, we, we got so much money here. Do we want Praether? Hmm, I could maybe get Praether. I mean, as I said, he looks like he's playing under his price tag. So somebody that is considerable. Uh, I'm very interested in Glover. Uh, his early fixture isn't great in the sense that he does single, double, three singles. So someone that maybe you're getting a bit of a punch out of and then trading but as i said at the same time it's not a big deal if they have a poor fixture if they're going to be making us good money saying this if he has a round two price rise and he's not going to make that much money then we can always hopefully move him on to someone around that has around like they don't have a price change till round three and we can bank a little bit of money there so we could look at glover in this team hickey is the other one doing really well exact same situation as glover round two um price rise but then has a really then has three singles after that as well. So the exact same situation as Glover. Um, and then we do have Henshaw down here. Now, Henshaw gives him the most PTSD out of anyone, and probably someone that I am not going to start, and I will move to if he is actually the goods. They talked about an increased role for him, but look, the last game, Bryce didn't even play, and he did big minutes because of that. I mean, I just, I'm not going to do Henshaw. I just, I can't. I can't make myself do it. Um, the other thing here is if you're picking someone on a poor schedule, last year we played with Henshaw, hold him basically half the season and he, and he didn't play. So he literally had a zero on our bench for like half the season. So even if I'm getting someone with a poor schedule, they're at least scoring points. So that's already better than what Henshaw did last season. And they're probably making money. So that, once again, better than what Henshaw did last season. So it is an improvement if I can get someone in. Um, I guess my only consideration here is, do I go Hickey or Glover to Praether? Um, obviously, the Hickey game that we saw that was really good, Trey Kell, wasn't in that game, and uh, that, I don't know. I think Glover, I think Glover and Hickey have both been good, Praether's also been good, and it really is a bit of a debate, which one do we want? Uh, what I do like about adding Praether is obviously you add that forward guard eligibility, sorry, guard, guard eligibility, so you can sort of DPP him around, so, um, it's really hard to choose Hickey or Glover, I think, Illawarra will start off with Kel, they'll then run Harvey, Days is at the four, Frolings at the five, the three spot, is what Swakala Bulla or Lee? Or does Hickey come on and they play small ball? Nah, Hickey's a backup guard. They're not doing that. Yeah, I, th I think we might go Hickey out. Mm, I think... God, it's, it's a hard one to choose. They're both around the same price and they both... Same schedule and they both have a similar role off the bench. Um, I think Hickey's just a bit more aggressive at the ring, where Glove is a better three-point shooter, but outside of that, they both do very similar things. So, yeah, it's hard to lock in. So this is sort of what the team's looking like at this point. Now, as I sort of talked about, I talked about some sort of iterations to the team. Now, if you're against starting Harrison, because you're like, bro, I don't want that fixture. Nah, I don't want to pick a guy that's got a terrible fixture like that. I don't want to pay that much up for a cash cow. I also don't think he's getting the 400k. I think you're cracked, Vern. So there's no way I'm starting Harrison. Okay, cool. You don't have to start Harrison. Move Harrison on out of the team. Um, let, Let's move Oliver down to the forward, because sorry, to the center, because honestly... I'm so off Lee and Low. I'm so off them. Just not interested in them. They just didn't touch me the right way. Um, that sounds terrible, but that's the words I'm going with. Um, I would have liked to get Darius Days. I'm a slightly out of money for it, so maybe I get Prey throughout too at that point. And then we can maybe go for a Darius Days, and then we can go for... Uh, a hickey, and that sort of fits into a team structure. Okay, cool. Um, now, you could say fixture-wise, it's like, but now you gave yourself poor fixture. Yeah, but let's think about it. Harrison had a poor fixture anyway, so Darius has a slightly better fixture. It's not a good fixture, but it's better. Um, and Hickey and K and Praether, well, Hickey, once again, exact same situation. Like, Illawarra have a slightly better fixture. Not a good fixture, but they have a better fixture. So, by default, Moving these around, you'd think, would earn us more points. But do they earn us more money? And that's the real question I'm asking myself there. Is, is it better? 
Um, also, what do I do after round three? So these are the things you got to think about. After round one, Bryce is going out. Okay, no problem. Bryce goes out. Let's just say, hypothetically, um, we're going to bring Adams in. Adam goes off, so you bring in Adams. Okay, cool. Uh, and then nothing else happens. Everything else runs perfect. Cool. Round three, ha uh, round two happens. Okay, all these guys run the double. Amazing. We fielded five doubles. Very happy with that. Um... Days didn't quite do it. He earned 30k, went up to 300k, but his break even's pretty stagnant, and it doesn't look like he's going to make much more money. Plus, he's got three single games here. Okay, well, let's move Days on then, if that's the case. Um, we do end up in this awkward situation where Oliver and Adams also would end up on a single this week as well. Uh, this is the week that Perth have a good fixture. So let's just say nobody, like everything else is still going well. These guys on the bench are still making money. These three are still going well. Can we yo-yo back to Bryce if that's the case? Maybe we can. And then we can look at some sort of forward to take over Darius's role. Uh, who's on a double here? Who's got a good schedule for round three? We kind of want to bring in these 36s or these Cans players. So honestly, better than Bryce, it might be better off going for KD. Bring him in in round three. Uh, awesome. Okay, we're going to be making some good money there. We could have even brought him in on round two, potentially. Uh, if he had a good enough round one game, and we're like, look, we're going to need him, but we need to make other moves. We need to move on Darius or something like that. So I don't want to lock myself out. Um, so let's just say, yeah, round one happened. Round two, we brought in Kendrick Davis. Because round three, I didn't want to position lock my... I, I didn't want to be in a position where I have to move days and um, Adams sort of thing. Uh, that's a possibility. Or as I said, we, we just do it this way that we did. Um, cool. So we want a uh, Cairns player. Cairns player. I would really love to get Groves up here. Uh, if I had to be honest. Here we go. Tanner Groves. Boom. Yeah, we ended up with 180k in our bank. It's not the end of the world as long as we ain't players that are making money. Because these guys haven't had price rises. Boom. These guys now have price rises. They've now got a double in round four. Awesome. We can hold them an extra week. Round four, who doesn't have a double? Sem don't have a double. And I'm not really going to be moving on white, but Sem don't have a double for four and five, so I could afford to move on Illy if I wanted to move on Illy. Look at all this money I have. I have so much money. Um, who's got a good fixture after round four? I've got to be honest, nobody really has a great fixture round four to five because New Zealand come back from that double game. So we could choose... I don't want to hold Illy because I want to go towards PJC the following week. So we're going to bring someone in for a one-week rental. Let's go back to Adams. Boom, we go back to Adams, bring him in, get another good team rotation. Cool, round five happens. Cans double. He's still got a double in round six, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, Adelaide now don't have a double till around 11, so Davis has kind of got a poor schedule from here. Hopefully he got a bit of a price rise. Now he's 330k or something. Adam, yeah, he has two doubles after this. Let's maybe hope we could get all the way up to PJC if we've made enough money, but that's an extra 100k. We probably haven't made that money. Um, where else are we looking for money? Maybe Albridge has made the money that we needed because he's kind of got a... Oh, he's got a double in round six, but a bit of a poorer schedule. Maybe Le Pepe has made that money by that point. Maybe we can find some money elsewhere, but I don't know if we could go down from these guys. Maybe we just have to go Groves down. Um, into this round five game. And we want to be looking at uh, New Zealand players at that point. So if I just quickly filter for New Zealand for a round five, who could it be? Uh, Mooney's really shown his stuff. McCarron's really shown his stuff. Um, I think at a cheaper price tag too, I wouldn't mind him at the end of the day. Um, but let's just, for now, because White's still got a good schedule coming into round six, so we want to hold him. Same with the Sydney boys. I mean, we could maybe move on Adams. Nah, Adams has got a better schedule than Groves. Maybe we could go Adams out. Maybe we could go Groves out. I mean, these are all hypotheticals, but let's just go Groves out. Cool, we can get PJC into our team. Then who's a forward that we can get? I'll be honest, not really interested in these forwards, but we only need a cheap guy at this point. I guess that's the only problem if I was to be holding Adams. Are we talking hypothetical money? Maybe this King guy is doing all right and we can get to him. Yeah, nobody really jumping out to me from this New Zealand team that I want. Um, so let's maybe go Adams instead out. So if we went Adams instead, maybe Mooney's still lighting it up the way he is. Maybe McCarron's making money the way he is. Uh, and then we can hold Groves here instead sort of thing. So then we go back to Groves. And these are just things we got to take into account when we're making these sort of moves. What is our plan going forward? Now, that's hypothetically the best situation where I didn't move the bench once. Our bench players are sitting there making money. 
And now they're hopefully making money. And we're just moving around the premiums and banking the most points that we can week in, week out sort of thing. Um, so let's just go back. Let's just go back. If I hit the my team, I don't know if it'll take me back. So let's just clear these guys out from the way they were. So that, that's a hypothetical situation we could look at and sort of how I'm looking at it to my weeks. If we go Oliver here and let's just get um Harrison. Oh God, you're meant to be in my team. Get in my team, bro. Uh, let's go Harrison here, let's go Cotton here, and let's get Illy back in here. Okay, cool. Round one happens, let's say Harrison's generally popping off and he's generally going to be someone that we keep, then yeah, we can just sort of move Cotton. We're going to keep most of these guys. Maybe we keep Harrison. As I said, it's very debatable. If we need to move him, we can flip Oliver into the forward if we need. So maybe two players get moved this week, maybe they don't. Maybe there's a bench player that didn't pop up. Maybe... As we mentioned, Henshaw went off and he generally dropped 20 points and it looks like he's getting 15 to 20 minutes and it's like, ah, oh, okay, he's coming in as the two. They're still playing Bryce for big minutes, but he's chopping and changing with um, Corey Webster or Ty Webster. I think Ty Webster is the one they have still. I forget which Webster they have. Um, Ty Webster they still have and it's like, okay, so he's going to make some big money. Um, that's fine because... He I mean, technically, we can wait for a price rise from Hickey, Glover, Allbridge, all these guys. We don't really have to force Henshaw in just yet. We can wait for a round two. So that's not a big deal. Is there anyone in round two who maybe pops up? Maybe Luis uh, Malakwik. I think that's the next star. Maybe he pops off. I don't know. Maybe you have someone else that just pops off that has a round two price rise and you need to jump on them sort of ASAP. Then we can move one of these bench players around with Bryce. As I said, maybe an injury happens and we can move them around. So, I don't know. That's sort of how I'm looking at this team. I think I've yammered on way too much, so I'm just going to sort of save it in. Um, this is what I think I'm looking at the moment. Um, we kind of talked about Hickey to Prather. That's still one I need to toss up. So, um, the guarantees I can definitely lock in. So, let's just do the quick recap of everything um before we do this recap we are going to drop the league code boom probably should have done that at another point but we mentioned this at the start of the video i am scattered all the time when i'm doing these so this head-to-head -head code for any people that have really listened on and i really appreciate you because honestly this this was a lot of yammering for me Honestly, it was a lot of yammering for me. Um, so the league code is 399700. So get into that league. Uh, you know, if there's like a day before the season and there's still people have missed it because not enough people have watched through the video, then it is what it is. I'll throw it out on Twitter or something, get some people in it that way. But yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, th this just, I guess, going over top to bottom, these guys are locks. You're locking in Oliver, you're locking in White. I'm pretty happy with Illy honestly hitting a lock. I don't see Illy moving my team. So these are the guys that aren't going to leave my team. Oliver's not leaving. White's not leaving. I'm not going to let Oldbridge leave or Le Pepe leave at this point. Uh, Zakalski's going to be there and Illy's going to be there. These are the other four that are up for debate. Cotton, Harrison, Glover, and Prather. Um, or as I said, Hickey, like he's one of the people that would just, you know, contemplating switching with one of these two they're the guys that are up for debate and maybe i move them around maybe i talk a bit more to dave boz these other absolute legends of the games saying that i don't want to taint my thoughts too much i do like i do think that last year my eye test led me to a very good starting team and i think i would like to sort of try and stick with that i think we've picked good fixture based players for the on-field options except for harrison that's the only thing that might be a little bit concerning people might prefer to go for a lee there or a low there and that's perfectly fine if you do i mean you could run this exact same team and switch harrison out for lee or low and you may just get better reward out of it you may make good enough money you may make enough points to justify the difference in money because i think harrison will make more um and then then be able to get onto harrison when round nine comes around yeah it, it's definitely definitely something you can do um but yeah, this, this is the team I think I'm going to stick with. Uh, even as we saw when I messed around with Harrison, it wasn't like I moved Oliver or White out. It's like if I moved Harrison out we and I wanted days in, I wasn't losing one of these guys. I was losing Harrison. Uh, if I'm going to bring in Low or Lee, I'd lose Harrison again. So yeah, Harrison's the one that's a little bit questionable. Cotton, I think I'll stick with just because the amount of money we have left over, honestly. We have so much money left over that why not play Cotton in Perth? for the first round of the season. Like, why why not do that sort of thing? I think that just... 
seems like a good thing to do. And then as I mentioned, round two comes along. Hopefully the team's perfect. Maybe we need to make one change and then we can make a second change with Cotton. Cotton can go to anyone on round two. So it just works out well. So I am happy with how that is. So Cotton, I think I'm, there's a good chance I'll stick with, but a variable that could change. And then Praetha and Glover. Yeah, just I just don't know. Praetha, Glover, Hickey. They're all very up and down. Henshaw, as I said, I'm not going to start him. I'm going to watch week one and week two, see if he's actually getting the... You know, his due diligence, uh, getting those minutes, getting those points, and actually going to be a viable option. So, look, that's going to be my team, guys. I'm so sorry for how long this video went, how much I ranted. But, it, look, it was a real deep dive into my thoughts heading into this season. I really hope it helps you guys with your starting teams. Anyway, I appreciate all those that stayed to the end of the video. All those that have liked, subscribed once again for that consistent injection of Supercoach content directly into your Supercoach feed. Sorry, into your YouTube feed. <laughs> I mean, if you're on Twitter, it's your Supercoach feed because that's, that's all my Twitter is. It's just a Supercoach feed. <laughs> um, but till next time, guys. Peace. Later.